Hello viewers, welcome to another session of my pharmacology series. Today I will be discussing about the another very important class of drugs that is the emetics and the anti-emetics. So the first category the, that is the emetics, they are broadly divided uh, the they are broadly divided into two categories that is the drugs which are going to act on the chemoreceptor trigger zone that is the ctz and the next that is uh, that are going to uh, irritate that are going to irritate the gastric mucosa and the chemoreceptor trigger zone so basically the, the emetics can be broadly classified the drugs can be broadly categorized into depending upon their site of actions uh, into acting on the ctz that is the chemoreceptor trigger zone and those act irritating the gastric mucosa and the chemoreceptor trigger zone so just let me tell you guys about what is the chemoreceptor trigger zone so chemoreceptor trigger zone is an area of the medulla oblongata that receives inputs from the blood-borne drugs or hormones and communicates with other structures in the vomiting centers to initiate vomiting all right so chemoreceptor trigger zone is basically an area that is located on the medulla oblongata and that is going to receive the inputs that is from the blood-borne drugs or hormones and it is going to communicate and with the other structures and aid in vomiting and it initiates the chemoreceptor trigger zone is basically responsible for the initiation of vomiting so the first drug class of the drugs that which are acting on the chemoreceptor trigger zone is the epomorphine and the next class of the drug is those acting on the, that those irritating the gastric mucosa and the chemoreceptor trigger zone is called as and class the drug is epicacuana so this was about the emetics now we are going to we'll be seeing about the anti-emetic drugs so the classification of the anti-emetic drugs can be well remembered if we just remember the five a's so the first a refers to the anti-dopaminergic okay the first a refers to the anti-dopaminergics so here we are going to have the two categories first is the non-selective and the next is the selective D2 blockers. So the non-selective antidopaminergics comprises of the drugs that is the chlorpromazine, prochlorprom, prochlorperazine. Next, the selective D2 blockers, they are also very commonly called as the prokinetics. So the examples of this category includes the metaclopramide and the domperidone. So the first A stands for the antidopaminergics. The second A. The second A refers to the antihistaminics. So the another antiemetic, the second class of the antiemetic the of drugs comprises of the antihistaminics. In this, we are going to have the category the drugs comprising include the promethazone, cyclizine, meclizine, and cinarizine. So the second A of the antiemetic refers to the antihistaminics the third a that is the anticholinergic it is comprising of a single drug which is the hyoscine that is the third a refers to the anticholinergics the fourth antiemetic class of drugs in comprises of the anti serotonergics so here we are going to have the very famous the uh, antiemetics which are very easily available in the market in the form of the names of the drug is ondansetron and cesapride and the fifth a of the anti-emetic classification corresponds to the adjuvant drugs so in the in the adjuvant drug categories we can use a wide variety of drugs including the cannabinoids the corticosteroids and the benzodiazepines so viewers this was my analysis or the short trick as to how we can very easily remember the classification of the anti-emetic drugs by just remembering the five a's 
The first A refers to the antidopaminergic, the second A to the antihistaminics, the third A to the anticholinergics, the fourth A to the antiserotonergics, and the fifth A to the adjuvant drugs. So viewers, if you do like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated about my new videos. Thank you for watching.